that's drunk. Scrolling through the available NES games to play on Nintendo Switch Online, I stumbled onto Nightshade, released in January 1992 and developed by Beam Software, who at this point were mostly known for PC games like Castle of Terror and text adventure games based on stories like The Hobbit. But Beam Software has a bit of a sketchy record when it comes to NES games, sticking mostly to licensed crap like Days of Thunder and Back to the Future. However, Nightshade is something a bit different. It's a point-and-click adventure game with a noir fiction vibe, as you can tell from the cover art here. Although it kind of looks like this guy is doing a Tiger Woods fist pump because this poor dude is getting mugged back there, like, yes, finally that guy gets what's coming to him! The story is set up in the manual by a guy named Daryl Woolridge. Eh, I wonder if he's related to Orlando Woolridge. Everything is laid out in a four-page section where it's revealed that the game takes place in Metro City, which is probably just a generic name, but I like thinking that this is actually the world of Final Fight, where Mike Hager is mayor. However, Nightshade has a decidedly darker slant to it, imagine that, since this new guy, Sutek, showed up and crushed every crime family in town and basically became the Egyptian Michael Corleone of Metro City. The game speaks of a superhero named Vortex who tried to stop him and was killed for his trouble. So, since Metro City's costumed superhero struck out, instead it's up to global encyclopedia researcher Mark Gray to make things right. No, really, that's the protagonist, a guy that works for a publishing company. At night, he goes after bad guys and dons a hat, trench coat, and sunglasses. What is he, Cory Hart? No, not that Cory Hart. So, how does this game work? You boot it up, go through the story sequences, and, uh, I'm already tied to a chair. The heck is this? Scooch over to get away from the bomb, and then use the candle over here to burn the rope and free yourself, and before you know it, you're marching around town looking for clues on where to find Sutek. And you do that by wandering around, talking to people, examining rooms, and punching people in the face. You use the D-pad to hover your cursor over something, and the A button looks at it, while the B button uses it if applicable, and the select button allows a bunch of other commands, like jump or to pick something up, as well as look at your inventory. But yeah, using the D-pad for a mouse cursor is never ideal. In this game, it's annoyingly slow, but it's not game-breaking or anything. There is plenty of combat here. When you come across an enemy like this guy who's totally wailing on an old lady, you just walk up to him and the game switches to a single screen beat em up where you just punch the guy in his giant face. Hmm, I didn't know Robert Zadar was ever in an NES game. The controls here are, uh, not the greatest. Everything moves really fast and it's really easy to die in just a couple seconds. You can punch and kick, but your best bet is usually to jump over the enemy and punch them like this. It's not great and the boss fights in this one can be pretty brutal. The two meters you see on screen show your health and your popularity in town, and you'll want to keep that high because it'll be easier to get information from people. But if you screw around too much and ignore the townspeople, then you'll miss out on clues and you won't be able to progress in the game. You increase your popularity by doing good deeds, like rescuing people from this burning building, for example. Despite all the limitations in Nightshade, this game still packs in a surprising amount of entertainment, and a lot of that comes from the writing. Everything may look dark and grimy and ominous, but this game has a sense of humor. You'll see people get Nightshade's name wrong, calling him Lampshade or Nightcart. You'll comment on random stuff you see, like with this grate here. You'll mention how your great-great-grandfather had a much greater grate. You can also talk to cats and squirrels. You can piss off this museum curator by wrecking his stuff. I guess the best way to describe this game is cheeky. There's over a hundred screens to search in this game, and almost every one of them has something interesting or amusing. What's really cool about this game is that you can explore and find stuff in any order. It's not just a linear path, but eventually you'll want to find five scarabs scattered throughout the town, and you use them to locate Sutek. I gotta mention the strange way this game lets you continue after you die. Apparently, Beam Software were told by publisher Ultra Games that they weren't going to have a battery save, so instead of having a password system that's 10 miles long, the game gives you a chance to continue right then and there. You're given five lives, or really, five traps you have to escape. The first one has you strapped to a conveyor belt where your head is gonna be crushed, but if you time it right, you can use your foot to flip this switch here and you're back on your way. If you can't escape, it's game over and you have to start over. This is a really clever way to get around those limitations. I'm not sure I can remember another game with a continue system like this. So yeah, Nightshade is a weird game, but I think it's well worth checking out today. It's the only game like this on the NES that isn't a PC port, and yeah, the user interface isn't the greatest, but I mean, it's an NES game. For a console that only has a four-button controller, this is as good as you could possibly do. I think the strengths outweigh the weaknesses here. The vibe of this game is unlike any other on the NES, and it's actually got some pretty funny lines scattered throughout. It only takes a couple hours to complete this one, and I recommend you check it out. It's a good time. And that's all for now, and I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day!